Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. This video will be a complete guide to how to off tank better Mob Lord Kaj as easily and as simple as possible. So you won't be seeing any crazy ass uh, trash stacks or poles. It's just for a clear. Hard mode is not included and that will be a video for another time. First thing you want to do here as you can see in the video is as the off tank, you want to stack the archer onto the sun eater. Since the sun eater is a number one priority target in the trash, it is very awkward for your DPS to sort of move their AoEs away from the Sun Eater to the Dread Stalker. So that's why we stack the Archer onto the Sun Eater. And after that, you just want to try to go through the door as fast as possible. Um, what causes the door to not work is often somebody has a dot on them or something like that. And that's why your group gets stuck in combat on that door. So here, it's preference as to which trash you want to take as an off tank or a main tank even. Here, I'm going to prefer to take the two Dreadstalkers up the hill and stack them in the middle of the area. And meanwhile, the main tank has taken the Shadow Guard that spawns at the foot of the hill. And he's put them in the uh, group's AoEs and they're coming back up. And here, again, we're not doing a big trash pull. I am just want to show you guys how to off tank this place as simply as possible. Uh, especially if you're not a very experienced group or in a pug group or in a progression group this is how you're going to be doing it for the most part or how I would prefer to do it if I was in such a group uh, to be more accurate and uh, I didn't quite know where to stack the two ender but you always want to test stack the two ender on where the stack is so the main tank will make the stack and your job essentially as the off tank is going to be stacking the two hander onto the stack the tank makes and there's a lot of tanks out there both inexperienced and non-experienced that take the two handers away from the stack um, which is no bueno you want to try avoiding the armor shatter and as for how you dodge roll the armor shatter i'll go more into it later as we are approaching the first boss fight here and pretty much people are setting up their buffs and stuff so i'll sort of go over how to dodge roll the two hander shatter so as a two hander um, or the savage draws up his arms to over his head to land the shattering armor shatter armor on you you want to dodge roll and it's preferred that you dodge roll forward rather than backwards because as you'll see later on in this video dodge rolling backwards may cause his animation to cancel out which will cause him to do in the second shatter which may catch you off guard your job here is the off tank basically just help out the main tank with the buffs and debuffs uh, crusher, engulfing if you have it, and whenever the main tank gets cursed, you want to give a countdown to the main tank. Um, if you are the main tank, or even the off tank, and you had the boss on you, a really great chaining here by the way from the main tank, uh, if you have the boss, regardless of which tank you are, you don't want to keep taunting the boss, because that may cause over taunting, so... It's better to communicate and say, okay, three, two, one, taunting now. So they have time to react and don't move the boss or anything, and they don't panic. And as both a main and off tank, you want to make sure you guys have talons and chains for the cats that spawn every 20% of the boss's health. So here we have me chaining. I mess up the talons there, and I miss uh, the cat. I am, however, pu pulling them in back again. And you want to talons them once they're in the AoEs. And usually after 2-3 to three talons, uh, as long as the group's AoEs are on Zajasa, the cats will just die. And we're going to hide behind the pillars here. If you have the taunt on Zajasa on you at this point, you can dodge roll out early at a specific moment in time. And uh, he, won't move the spot. he won't move from the spot. Here I'm resing a person. Honestly, as the off tank, you don't really do much here on the Zajasa fight. Besides chaining uh, the cats in, taunting the boss when necessary, and, ta and talents and cats. And here, the uh, main tank tells us that he's cursed. So I, I told him, okay, three, two, one. We're going to taunt Zajasa. And we're going to keep Zajasa. And conveniently, uh, I get cursed. And I go to a pad, knowing this pad will be up soon. A lot of people, for some reason, uh, panic and think the pads won't be up in time but as you will see uh, the pad will come back up in time as long as you notice which pads were taken first and then we come back in and the main tank is cursed and we give him a countdown as we come back 
and here we are chaining the cats in. Really great chaining by the main thing here in uh, cooperation with me. And for the most part, that's pretty much it. You rinse and repeat until your group kills Ajasa, uh, whether you finish at the second five pillar phase or however many pillar phases your group needs to. It's just rinse and repeat. The cats will not respawn after they die. Uh, the cats will spawn in greater numbers every 20%, however. So just keep that in mind when you are off tanking and you have your chains and talents ready. Here, as the off tank, I prefer to trigger the next trash. Um, and by triggering, I just mean I just want to force them to spawn by crossing that certain boundary where they uh, start spawning. And here, the main tank will tank all the ogres, and you'll help out with the talons and make sure you know no one really dies to the heal AOE from the ogre shaman. And right here, I'm trying to give crown to the main tank, but unfortunately, I don't find his name in time. And by that time I do find his name, I have to tank the uh, two hander. Here, the main tank will taunt the sword and board and the archers and stack them. And my job again as the off tank is to stack the two hander onto the stack, not away from the group. If you are not confident in dodge rolling the shatters, I suggest you guys get more comfortable. And as you can see from what I told you guys earlier, uh, it's, pref it's preferable that you dodge roll forward uh, when the armor shatter goes out. And if you do dodge roll the armor shatter successfully, um, no, no one in the group will get the armor shatter. So I know a lot of tanks that will still take them out just in case they might get armor shattered. But honestly, you gotta learn someday and that's how you do it. Uh, if you guys don't have an add-on or if you guys play on console for the armor shatter, it's fine. I mostly look for the visual uh, anyway when I off tank the two handers. I don't really listen or look out for the raid notifier notification. I just sort of look at it and always pay attention to two hander, nothing else. And here, uh, if you have noticed, I taunted the archer first to stack it onto the sun leader fast. And that'll be a common theme throughout the trial when I do have to take an archer. And I stacked the archer on the sun leader and I brought the two hander in and we dodged all the shatters and that is pretty much it. Here, the off tank uh, will be getting the left side, two ogres and one shaman and the main tank will be get, grabbing the right side. And this will stay consistent. Your group can assign the off tank or main tank to whichever side they want. And this is how you should stack it. And you want to make sure the ogres are talonsed and that no one's too deep in those uh, very painful ogre AoEs that go out. And here I'll be taunting the sword and board and the two ender as the off tank and stacking them on the sun either. And meanwhile the main tank will be stacking the archer onto the sun eater. However the uh, sun eater died pretty fast. So he came back in pretty early and now we're just going to stack everything on the archer wherever he is. And again, you always want to pay attention to the two-hander, no matter what. It really helps just focusing just solely on the two-hander as the off tank, and you'll get better, a lot better at avoiding the armor shatters. Here, the main thing is t uh, putting everything on the next sun eater spawn, and a few DPS got very, very greedy there, um, trying to get as much DPS as possible and going deep into the ogre heal AoEs. And again, as before, you want to keep it consistent, whichever side you take. This time around, I took the left side again, and I'm taunting and bashing the left render, while the main tank is taunting and bashing the right render. And this goes on for a bit, because we have a lot of people then who got uh, completely uh, screwed over by the ogre OEs. Alright, and after that render dies, you want to taunt the archer again first, on uh, common theme as I said before, and this will make the archer move to you faster. And here, don't worry if the, the gate spawns on you, you still need to dodge roll the two ender shatter. Two ender shatters are always priority to uh, manage. And the archer will come in, and that's about as far as you can get the archer to come in, and it's pretty close to where the main tank will put the ogres on. And everything pretty much melts as long as everyone's AoEs are down. And that's pretty much it. Uh, there's no tier ender spawn on the last wave of the gauntlet pole here. So you want to taunt the, the sword and boards. And as you saw just now, I messed up on my last armor shatter. 
and if an armor shatter goes out, it'll stay on the group for at least five to eight seconds. So I took the sword and boards out instead of just stacking them right away uh, near where the group was, because if people are shattered and don't, they don't they don't block the uh, sword and board spins, they'll just instantly die. So I just thought it more prudent to first tank them outside of the group and then bring them in. And yep, that is pretty much the entirety of the gauntlet from the off tank perspective. Next, we're going to be going into the twins fight. And honestly, there's no real uh, difference between the main tank or an off tank and the twins fight. But I'll explain why we do what we do. Alright, uh, doesn't matter which side you're on, whether you're the off tank or the main tank, far side or entrance side. Here, I'm on the far side or exit side. I'm chaining Skin Ryan. And we use chains as a soft taunt. We don't really taunt them right away to to avoid the risk of over taunting. I step out of the group and taunt the other boss for shy. And we're gonna pretty much chain in the black add in when we can. However, we kind of miss and go for the white add instead. And if you see a dark add at any time, point towards the other group, you want to taunt it as I just did. And we are really, really close to each other as a group. And here's a good tip for tanking the twins. Whenever the uh, dark adds do the void ball shit that keep knocking you back, just let go of block and time your blocks in accordance with Bashai's heavy attacks. If you block those void balls, th uh, they'll keep staggering you. If you don't block, uh, they will not stagger you. And we want to tank Bashai as close to middle as possible in the beginning. And this makes it very, very easy to chain in the dark adds, uh, as opposed to a lot of progression groups putting him really close against the walls, which honestly is more detrimental to the group than it is helpful. And the group just needs to learn to how to handle uh, their proximity to each other. So here we're gonna, we have our skin right again, and we're going to put him close to middle. I like to point him, point his back towards the wall like that which means the white adds will spawn a little closer to me in more convenient spots. If you point his back towards the entrance, um, the adds will spawn a little further away in really weird locations. And yes, the ad spawn locations are dependent on uh, which way the boss is facing, which is pretty weird, but you'll get a hang of it. And as you can see, the other tank is tanking Vishai pretty close to middle, and that's what we want. And Skin Rai is always going to be close to middle, no matter what. And we're going to go enter a second prayer phase. And we're going to stay because colors haven't swapped. And you just want to apply your buffs and debuffs for the group. And now this is going to be the final phase of the twins fight here. And we are going to be taunting Vishai. And again, mirror opposite of what we did at the start. We're going to put him close to middle, but on the opposite side of the half circle. If that makes any sense. And here, as you can see, the dark ads spawn very, very close. Or rather, we are much closer to them than we would be if we were in a progression group and taking it very close to the wall. But it doesn't matter. We kill Vashai and we move on. Now, the next trash gets a lot more complicated for the off tank and the main tank. So you guys are going to have to pay a little bit more attention to this next part. The first pull here, before the chain pulls... Um, it's very, very easy, and I'm explaining it. So the two big cats over there, they are one-shotters. So if they touch you, you're done. doesn't matter if you're a tank, DPS, or healer. If they swipe you and you don't dodge roll or avoid their swipe, it's a one-shot. It's a pretty fun uh, trash. And here, you want to make sure you're walking or running with the other person that's taking the aggro of the cat. Now. Don't do what this person did and go all the way around to the other ramp. Instead, go up towards the left ramp. Uh, as you can see what just happened, this split up the cats quite a bit, and you don't want to do that. You want to make sure the cats are as close to each other as possible, so both of them get cleaved in equal amounts, and they die at roughly the same time, or at least very close to each other uh, time-wise. And here we have a lot of deaths to the one-shots. Uh, one and we're going to be starting with the left chain pull. Again, we're not going to be doing a double chain pull. This is just going to be focusing on how to successfully off-tank a veteran model or Kaj as simply as possible. 
And here we're going to take the two ender and stack it on the sun eater first because everyone's dots and everything is going to be on the sun eater. And you really want to watch for that shatter there. Um, if you time the shatter well enough, you can dodge roll backwards, but it's a bit risky dodge rolling backwards. I always try to dodge roll forward. And here the main tank took care of the archers. And we have another two ender spawn. We're only going to be taking two ender uh, just because it's just that easier. And you just want to be focusing everything on the two ender uh, as a tank, your attention especially. So the shatter time wise roughly goes out every 10 seconds. So as long as you have that uh, internal timing for, ten, for a 10 second shatter, you should be fine. And you want to dodge with that field away from the group. Unfortunately, that forced us to make a mistake. Um, and we have an armor shatter. So some people are shattered right now. And by the time, like three to four seconds into the spawn, uh, people are still shattered. But the main tank took the sword and boards away. Uh, very smart. And we're going to avoid this next shatter here. And we're going to try to keep stacking the two-hander on the stack as best as possible. Uh, the sun enemies are dying very slowly, but I believe some people in the group were not focusing on sun eaters. And as I said at the very beginning of this video, sun eaters are your number one priority target. They must die no matter what. Makes tanking easier, makes DPSing easier, makes healing so much easier. And that is pretty much it. Three waves on the left chain pull, and we're gonna have three waves on the second chain pull here. And again, for the first wave, we're gonna be taunting the two ender only and stacking on the sun eater, as everyone's dot should be on the sun eater. And you wanna avoid the first shatter. By the time the second shatter goes out, or when we near it, uh, the two ender should be dead. And there are just no. Uh, two hander on the second wave of the right chain pull so as the off tank you're gonna be stacking the sword and boards onto the stack the main tank makes and it's a very precarious situation when you have uh, two sword and boards they may spin at the same time and that can often be a one shot to the dps so uh, after their heavy attacks they usually do the spin so that's when you can notify your dps to block and on third and last wave, a two ender spawns. And again, we want to pay very close attention to it and avoid armor shattering the group. And just look at how quickly the uh, two ender just dies and all that cleave. And that's pretty much what you want. Again, for the purpose of this video, we are making it as simple as possible. And the faster the two ender dies, the better. It's just not worth it to take it out of the group, get armor shattered, and die anyway. So definitely. Uh, we're gonna learn. We you guys should learn how to dodge roll the shatter while in the group. It's definitely worth it. Makes things go a lot faster and a lot more smoothly. And it, you know, if you armor shatter people, whatever, it's a mistake, and you learn from mistakes. And that's the whole purpose of this video. You make mistakes, you adapt, and you learn. For here, we're gonna put the two ender and the sword and board on the sun eater. The sword and board usually is taken by uh, a lot of main tanks with the archer, but I never understood why. So I pre as a preference, I take I like to take the sword and board and stack it in the sun eater with a two ender, and the armor is shattered. The sword and board is dead. Uh, we're still shattered, so you got to be careful. For this, I know a lot of main tanks like to take one two ender away from the off tank to give them less stress of handling two two handers at once. However, uh, in this video, we're going to be taking both, and it's honestly a matter of timing. Um, if you manage to outdistance them uh, before they spawn and they all and they both come running up at you at the same time, their shatters will typically go out at the same time. If you tank them right away, uh, they'll go out one by one. So it's a matter of preference of which you want to do. And here we get shattered again. Big mistake of mine because I expected the other two to die as fast as the other one. So here we're going to try to avoid the fire AoEs and such because you're still shattered and the shatter will just absolutely obliterate you um i guess it's a bit a little late to explain in this video what the shatter does the shattering strike basically reduces your resistance to uh, zero to physical physical resistance anyway uh, and you don't want to do that 
because as you can see the dread stalker spawns the cats they're physical the sword and board spins are physical it's honestly the combination of the sword and boards and the two hander shatters that will obliterate anyone honestly and here we managed to avoid that last armor shatter and here we are that is pretty much it that was pretty much in my opinion the hardest parts for the main tank or the off thing i mean um, the trash is definitely a very challenging part of the trial and for the last boss you're going to be seeing a very basic um, off tank setup uh, we'll be slotting a circle protection and that's pretty much it um, you don't really change out too many skills now for Maul or Crotch Hardmoon, it may be a different story, or depending on how experienced your group is, you may be DPSing instead of just purely tanking. But again, just for the purpose of teaching you guys how to off tank this place efficiently and as simply as possible, uh, we're just going to be purely tanking. Nothing too special or extra. And... Uh, we're just kind of winning around, I guess, role-playing for a cat to spawn. But yep, tip so far, dodge roll forward for the armor shatter, not backwards. And that's pretty much it. And we're going to taunt Rakai here with the main tank. Well, I guess we're not taunting, but the main tank's taunting. And here, if I, if I have powerful assault, I like to just walk around in vigor and give uh, the PA uptime to as many people as possible. And you don't really do much as the off tank on the first pad. I mean, you just help out with Alkash and powerful assault if you have it. Um, circle's not really needed here either, but I just put it down anyway because there's nothing else to do. Now, this is a preference of mine as the off tank. I taunted the Hulk, or aka the big two ender, and put him in the group rather than move him immediately to the next pad because he'll get a lot of cleave damage on him. Now there's two set patterns of the Hulk. Um, either he comes to you right away and shatters you, which means you have to bash him immediately after, or he sort of just lie attacks you and then you just have to wait and then he'll do the shattering. And you have to watch for his bashes. Uh, if, the bash, if the bash doesn't go out and he roars, it stuns everybody and fucks up everyone. And as you can see, you want to take the Hulk after every shatter he does on the main tank. He can shatter you twice and then the main tank will have to take him. And here he shattered me a second time but I'm very confident in the group DPS to kill him as quickly as possible and I just let him go. But yep, you don't want to keep taunting the Hulk as main tank nor the off tank to avoid over taunting. So make sure you're just taunting him once per swap. And he'll stick on you unless you get stunned or CC'd. Um, even if the ton falls off, the natural aggro will stick on you. And here you're going to help out with uh, kiting the meteors. Because there's nothing, there's nothing else to do as for the off tank once the Hulk dies. And you're just going to be providing buffs and circle protection pretty much for the group. And by the fourth pad, a second Hulk will spawn. So they spawn every even number pad. And you want to make sure you get the bash in. He shatters you. A mistake I did here was not putting him in the AoEs on the previous third pad. I just brought him immediately to the fourth pad. And there's a second shatter. And this is when I tail the main tank to take it. I watch for the bash. And that is pretty much it. We're going to be burning Rakat on pad 5. And I take the two-hander back after the shatter on the main tank. Here, the main tank uh, makes a small mistake. He goes to pad one when he doesn't really need to. Uh, at, I would say put the off or main tank on pad three if you need to take those spheres during execute. Because he's really far away. He hasn't taunted the other hawk. And the other hawk needs a, needs a bash. So if the fight had gone maybe like two or four seconds longer, the other hawk would have roared and potentially to kill a lot of people during execute. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much uh, a very simple, efficient guide on how to off tank my Lord Hodge uh, on the veteran. So hopefully you guys have learned a bit, and I'll see you guys next time.